however long from now, I will look back to John as one of the most remarkable individuals that I've met. One of the most distinctive characters. A man with an extraordinary capacity for leadership and inspiration. I met the Mr. John Chambers in 1994 when I joined the Cisco board. He was VP of sales and I thought I'd never met anyone with nice so much enthusiasm in my life. Yes. And you know what? It hasn't changed. I first met John in 2000 at the National Sales Conference. And I was with a group of folks and he came up to our group and it was like Mick Jagger had arrived from the Rolling Stones. He was amazing. I learned so much from him. And whether it was the way he treated his employees or the way he did acquisitions, I knew there was going to be a lot more to learn. John always surprised me. He surprised me because he was sensitive to things that usually lead around not. For him, a social idea, a human call, is part of the business. Uh, one of his favorite lines is, we partner for life. And when he says that, he's not just talking about a business partnership, it's also the relationship with our employees, it's the way he feels about his friendships. Uh, he's been married to Elaine for more than, probably going on 40 years now. Um, so he's really about partnering for life. I especially admire John for not just being a great corporate leader, but being a corporate giver. And by insisting that Cisco focus its attention on the rest of the world. Your dedication to using Cisco's technology to solving problems and engaging on a wide range of important issues has been highly effective and deeply inspiring. I am very grateful for the work that we have done together and I'll always be proud to have presented you with the Clinton Global Citizenship Award, the very first one. He always leads from the front. He's always setting the pace and the example for our responsibility to give back in the community and the world. I'm a salesman myself, and I always appreciate another good salesman, but I think if there was only one order left on Earth, I think I might hire John Chambers to go get it. He just had that ability, that passion uh, to do things. John is eternally optimistic. He sees a way to the answer. He's willing to be uh, self-critical and change when he has to. Change even the things he's put in place himself. And I admire his courage so much for that. John believes that work is about more than the individual job you do. It's about the contribution that job makes to your company, your country, and indeed the world. He's always willing to, to bring a new idea from wherever the source is. And he empowers his employees and his teams to make the best possible decision. Not all risks pay off. Sometimes they don't work out, but the thing about John is that he had the passion, the integrity, and the desire to constantly be looking to the future to see what was there for Cisco, but more importantly, what was there for the American people and for the people of the world. John's leadership style is one of compassion and caring. I have never seen anyone care about 70,000 plus employees the way that John does. And also the fact that he's humble. He doesn't have an ego. When John's at his best, I think is when we're in crisis. Um, and I think where, he, where he's so different than I think his peer group in the community is that every time we have a sick employee at Cisco, John is so incredibly well connected with that individual, whether it's the employee themselves, their spouses, their kids. Our relationship really started to become more personal and 
2006, when I was diagnosed with cancer, my executive vice president reached out to me to see what the situation was. And he reached out to John and within two hours, John was on the phone with the doctor and uh, really Hopkins. Well. We've got uh, two Cisco family uh, crisis situations going on. I mean, it speaks uh, to John's character. He would call and, and we really had these true conversations, conversations about overcoming adversity, overcoming illness, things that he had learned from his parents. And then in um, 2010, when my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, John had also got my parents' phone number and when my dad was having a bad day um, from his cancer treatment, John called him and told him that his kids were gonna be okay and that he loved us and that we were part of the Cisco family and that my dad could be proud. I can never thank him enough for giving my dad that sense of peace to know that as he was leaving the earth that he, his kids were in a good place and that he had done a great job and we were working for a great man. You know, John has really let his competitive spirit push himself, which indeed has pushed Cisco, which has made us a leader in the industry. So it's set a, a tone for the tech community that speed and aggressiveness is the only way you win. And I think that is really due up to a very large part to John's nature. John, competitive? <laughs> let me tell you, I, I can't uh, count how many $20 bets I had to keep track of. Is he competitive? Was that the question? <laughs> that he breathes. Okay, who's 20 bucks? First fish. Uh, how about the biggest fish? And the uh, most fish? So one of the things that he loves to do is say, there's six elevators here. Which one do you think uh, will come first when we press the button? So this is the level that he loves to compete. My favorite gambling story with John is playing liar's poker with him. Because in the course of a multi-day trip, John will memorize the numbers on every bill you play with. So after three or four days, it's impossible to beat John in liar's poker, no matter how many bills you bring. The company was $1.2 billion in revenue. 20 years later, here we are, almost $50 billion. I don't know anyone who has that kind of record. It truly is extraordinary and puts you in the Hall of Fame. Through your commitment to innovation and your vision for a future in which a connected planet is no longer a novelty but a necessity, you have literally transformed the way business is done. And along the way, you've built one of the most influential and successful companies in the world. The greatest achievements for you are still in the future. So look ahead, dream, dare, move, and move people, and move things with you, around you, and for all of us. First of all, you know I love you, buddy. And I think what I'd like to ask is that you give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to enjoy this life. I can see him going in a lot of different directions, but I hope one of them is to step back and have a little more time for fun. Uh, he should obviously relax. That is a five-letter word, John. Ramp it down to only 145 miles an hour. He'll still be working harder and faster and smarter than all the rest of us. Spend some time with your family, spend some time with yourself, and continue to give back like you always have. If John could use his skills and his experience and his teaching ability to really help the next generation of high-tech CEOs, uh, they would be the beneficiary, and I would say the world would be the beneficiary. He will. Uh, discover issues that need solution and he will put his trademark of intensity, creativity and leadership and ability to inspire people behind that. If I had to choose one word to describe John Chambers, I would choose the word honest. He's a statesman, he's a mentor. One word to describe John, well it's actually two words problem solver. Come on, you're asking me what's one word that applies to John? There are many, many words. Tremendous leader, unbelievable visionary, but most importantly, he's a great person 
and a great friend. Thanks, John. It feels good, this beauty light.